Hey guys, I'm Dan, and if you play Star Wars Legion, I'm going to show you how to take your clone army and give it a custom camo scheme that'll make them pop quick and easy. Alright guys, first step is going to be removing the models from the sprues themselves. Uh, newer Star Wars Legion models uh, are all in the harder plastic and come on sprues, which is fantastic. If you used any of the older uh, Legion models, it's a softer plastic, uh, lots of mold lines, lots of cleanup involved. These models, it, I really, really like the new ones. So uh, the first step is going to be removing the model from the sprue itself, and you just use a you know a modeling uh, sprue cutters. You can get them, you know, your local hobby store. You can find them online. And this particular one I'm using is just an Army Painter brand, but any brand will work. So what you want to do is you want to remove the model as close as you can. Uh, but also don't cut into the model itself. Be careful if you cut the model itself, then it's going to be hard to hide that with the sanding and priming. So what you do is you, you cut it close. If you got to leave a little tab on there, it's better safe than sorry. We'll clean that up in the next step. So what I'm doing now is I am taking care of the faint mold lines that are still present on these with the back edge of an X-Acto knife. And the reason you want to get rid of these is when you paint and you throw your shades and washes on here, they'll pull up against these edges which kind of highlights them. There's nothing worse than having a nice smooth armor line on the thighs or on the helmets and there's this line that doesn't really belong there. So for assembling the models, I use two different types of glue. I'll use the ultra thin cement and a super glue gel depending on the application. Primarily I use the ultra thin cement. Uh, it flows really well into the recesses, doesn't leave a lot of actual residue, and I mean it's it's almost kind of bonds the plastic together. The super glue gel I'll use, uh, it's a little bit more uh, sticky when you're assembling the models. You can, you know, place an arm, let it cure for just a few seconds, and then it'll hold it so you can reposition it. I'll use it for smaller pieces. Uh, with the ultra thin cement, you really need to hold it there a little bit longer. It takes a little bit longer for it to stick. Honestly, I, I find what works for you and whatever you're comfortable with. There's not one particular type of glue that works better than the others. Some people swear by, you know, a, a plastic glue. Some people swear by super glue. Uh, it kind of depends on what you're assembling and what works for you. Let's talk about primer. Primer is something I see a lot of debate about on the internet. Uh, some people swear that you need a really good primer. Some people swear you can't use rattle cans or you, or when you do, you've got to buy it from, you know, a uh, army painter or a games workshop or get some of these really expensive primers. Now I've found that this primer here, it's a matte white. They also make it in black, gray, brown, a couple different matte colors, but any of the matte colors, for some reason, it primes really smooth and it really makes some of the colors pop on these models. So I just picked it up in my local hardware store. It's literally a quarter of the price of some of the more expensive primers out there. And it's honestly my favorite. I've tried a few of the Army Painters. I've tried a few of the Games Workshops. And this is by far my favorite. So for the base coat, I use a Military in Green. It's a contrast paint by Citadel. And what the contrast paint does is it adds contrast. Uh, the darker pigments kind of pool up in the recessed areas and it almost does some shading for you. Now this helps, uh, it'll create a, a lot more of a lighting effect without you having to do the washes. But also for this particular pink scheme, if you let it pool up on the flat panels, it creates kind of a camo effect as well. Now you'll see, I, I take my brush and wherever it's a little bit too dark, just clean your brush off and go back in and wick away some of the darker pigments that are in there uh, where it's a little more saturated.
helmet here, we're going to cheat a little bit. What we'll do is we will lather this on thick. Now let this run into the recess areas, particularly take care to the visor. Uh, you want that to pool up in there, and when it dries, it's going to dry a lot darker than it looks. So really what this will do is this will save you the hassle of trying to get either black or, you know, a darker wash on your brush later and fill in that visor to a different color to achieve that effect. After you've got the helmet covered, once again, dry your brush off and wick away the spots that you want a little bit more detail in. Now obviously, it's going to fill in all of the crevices, so anything that you want a little detail, stick your brush in there, wick away that contrast paint, and watch the details emerge. With our model base coated, these are the paints that I'll be using to complete the look. Black, German Gray, German Camo Bright Green, Refractive Green, Chocolate Brown, and White. Now, you don't have to use these exact colors, and you don't have to use Vallejo. Use whatever you want. I prefer Vallejo. It's just what I've used. Uh, the paints have a nice flow to them. I like the pigments in them. But if you like Games Workshop, if you like Army Painters, if you like craft store paints, use what you're comfortable with. You don't have to use these exact colors. This is just a suggestion, and this is just what I did. To start, before we assemble the model, take your German Grey and paint the lower cloak on the inside. Then take black and paint the trim along the inside edges and lower edges. What we're doing now is getting paint into the areas that are going to be extremely hard to reach with his legs in the way. Now, go back to your German Grey, thin it down a little, and cover the outside of the cloak. Don't worry about all the edges and detailing. If you get some on the lower edges, we'll cover it in black. And if you get some against the holsters or some of the green, that's what your greens and your palette are for. Cover the area and get a nice, even coat. Now, take your black, clean up your edges, and paint the trim on the cloak.
Next is the pistols and the shoulder pads. Take your black, thin it down, and make sure to put a nice even coat over both. Make sure the paint falls into the recesses, and pay attention to the details. There's a little trigger guard around his fingers. Around the neck area, make sure to make clean lines using your time and a small pointed brush. I use a number one here, but anything that can hold a nice fine point. Now let's begin the process of the camouflage pattern by adding some shade. For this, I start by using Athonian Camo Shade. Place an even coat over the entire model. The shade produces a brownish hue over everything that you've just painted. Now we go back to the German Grey. The German Grey we use as a layer on top of the shoulder pads. Use the side of your brush and evenly coat only the tops of the shoulder pads. Thus the recesses and the borders will remain flat. Now, in order to shade the darker areas that we didn't cover with the camo shade, we're going to use Nulm Oil. Nulm Oil is great for the shoulders, cloak, and guns. Now, we're going to highlight the darker edges with a technique called dry brushing. In this case, we'll use German Grey again. But this time, we use an older brush, or the brush that I use is an old makeup brush. Either way, take a brush with a lot of bristles that you don't mind being damaged. Fill the brush with paint. Now, take the paint and rub most of it off on an old paper towel, or in this case, I'm using the mat. But either way, you want to clear the brush of most of the paint. Then, taking the brush and lightly touching all of the edges of the model that you want highlighted, you scrape off just a little bit of the gray onto the darker areas. I recommend going in a downward motion so as though it represents the light hitting off of the model. Now the fun begins, making the camel pattern. We're going to begin with chocolate brown. The key to making the camel pattern look semi-realistic is being random about it. Don't think too hard, pick a spot, throw some paint at it. Also, another technique I learned is to create a pattern in three different directions. When you paint your blob on there, try to go in three different directions with it. You'll find that it looks a lot more realistic than a circle or just a random shape, but more like a camel pattern. Also, try to ignore the panel lines on the individual armor pieces. If the camel was printed on the armor itself, it wouldn't stop just because there's a bend or curve in the armor. Now individual pieces should be different. Don't transfer a camel pattern from, say, the thigh to the knee or from the wrist to the hand.
Now we make the camo pattern pop with some white. Take the white and run it along the edges of the brown spots you've already created. Then, as your third direction in the camo pattern, blend it into the brown. Finally, I like to add a little detail to my models, a little red at the end of the blaster as if it's ready to fire. Now, this detail is totally optional, but I think it makes the blasters pop with just a little bit of color. And that's all there is to it. A simple camo theme for your clone army. Now if you don't like the wooded camo, hey, switch it up. Try maybe a contrast gray with blacks and whites for camo. Or something crazy like a red contrast paint and then reds and whites for camo. The only limit is your imagination. So there you have it guys, quick and easy. If you like my work, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Create Minis. If you want something else painted, hit me with a comment below. Like and subscribe, help the channel out. And until then, I'll see you next time.